Early in the day, I spoke with senior advisor to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Mark Regev, on the latest diplomatic push ahead of the Prime Minister's historic trip to Washington. Mark Regev, you're traveling with the Prime Minister to the White House. Certainly that signing ceremony with the UAE in Bahrain, a historic occasion in and of itself. But we expect representation from other uh, Arab nations in the region, countries that Israel doesn't even have relations yet to be also there. Can, what can you tell us about maybe what meetings the Prime Minister might be having, what he, what he, maybe those he hopes to have, what does he hope to accomplish there in Washington? Well, as you say very correctly, Kalev, this is a historic, historic occasion, a real breakthrough. Not one, but two Arab countries moving forward, normalizing their relations with Israel, and it's a sea change. You and I are both old enough to remember there was a time when the Arab world saw Israel as its enemy. Today, more and more Arab countries are seeing Israel as a, as a partner, as an ally, even as a friend. And it's, it's an important change and something we can all embrace. Right. Now, Mark, uh, there's been discussion, even debate in Israel over the significance of the signing of these peace treaties with the UAE and Bahrain. Perhaps put it to us into perspective, the greater perspective of the prime minister's overall diplomatic approach to the making peace in the region, including with the Palestinians. Well, obviously, this is an amazing breakthrough, and it's good for peace, it's good for the region. And ultimately, it would help, too, with the Palestinians, I believe, because, you know, in the past, people said that if Israel makes peace with the Palestinians, then the Arab world will follow. Maybe the opposite is going to happen. Maybe we're going to see a breakthrough with the Arab world and the Palestinians will follow. I hope they choose to do so. I hope to see the Palestinian process move forward again. Uh, we have a plan to do it. That's the Trump plan. And Israel is willing to start negotiations on that basis immediately. Now, of course, we've already seen contacts, certainly with the UAE, Mark, and changes, uh, these direct flights. We've seen meetings between bankers. Maybe talk us through, once this treaty is signed, what we can perhaps look forward to in the pace at which they will develop between the UAE now and now with Bahrain. Well, peace in itself is an amazing blessing. Just to sign the peace treaty uh, is a wonderful thing, and to normalize our relations with these two players in the Gulf is very, very important. But you're right in your question, it's, it's, it's peace is a blessing, but there are also many tangibles here for the Israelis and for people in the Gulf. We're talking about tourism, we're talking about trade, we're talking about commerce, we're talking about transportation. We're seeing a whole series of areas where we can work together and cooperate with our new friends in, in the Gulf. And I heard the Prime Minister say this morning in the government meeting, he, he called upon all ministers, each in their own portfolio. Where can we cooperate with the Gulf? Where can we strengthen our relationship? Where can we build new partnerships? Everyone here is very excited. Well, let me ask you about that, Mark, and perhaps I'm rephrasing my first question a little differently. We are expecting there perhaps other opportunities for the prime minister to meet with representatives of other countries. We're already hearing talk about uh, progress with other nations. I mean, is it possible that we'll see more breakthroughs even in the in this week ahead, President Trump seems to be very optimistic about that. We're very optimistic too, but I, I'd say we're optimistic because it's very clear what the direction of travel is. I mean, we're moving in one direction and one direction alone, and that is to greater normalization between Israel and the Arab states. And uh, you're 100% correct, Bahrain won't be the last. We waited 25 years between the peace treaty with Jordan and the breakthrough with the UAE. We waited less than a month for Bahrain to, to make its decision to normalize times with is Israel. And I don't think we'll be waiting too long before the, the next and the one after that come to. The direction of travel is clear. Right. Now, of course, uh, the one, uh, let's say, aspect of this development that the prime minister certainly has been hesitant about is the possible sale of F-35 U.S. stealth fighter jets to the UAE. Will the prime minister be raising that issue with the White House or even with members of Congress? We have to be very, very clear. Uh, the, the F-35 business was in no way part of this historic breakthrough that we had with the UAE. It was not part of that, and we reiterate that. We have a, 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 a our position. Uh, the Americans say they're committed to Israel's quality military edge, and, uh, and, and we'll see if that comes up. But we're very clear 
the breakthrough with the UAE had nothing to do from our perspective with the F-35s. All right, I do want to ask you about the delegation from the government that will be traveling with the Prime Minister reports. It does not include the alternate Prime Minister, Benny Gantz, or the Foreign Minister, Gabi Ashkenazi. Can you tell us about who will be traveling there and representing Israel at the White House? It's the Prime Minister and his senior team will be going, and it's, uh, we're very happy to be going. I mean, uh, I've gone on myself, as you know, on many trips with the Prime Minister to to Washington, and this is the first time we're going not to sign one, but two agreements that show a breakthrough in peace with our Arab neighbors. So it's it's to be part of history, and I'm sure the journalists who will be joining us on this trip will feel the same. Uh, and I'll end with a personal question, Mark. As you say, you, uh, we've been around and you've been a part and seen diplomacy up close, sometimes uh, successful, often less successful between Israel and Arab neighbors. Just your feelings now about being part of that ceremony that's going to take place Tuesday at the White House. Well, we're, we're looking forward to it, but uh, all eyes will be on my prime minister, who, of course, be giving remarks together with the president, together with the representatives of the two Arab governments. It really is a breakthrough. You know, uh, we often joke that the Middle East doesn't sometimes produce good news for the rest of the world. Yes, too many times the rest of the world looks at Israel and, sorry, looks at the region, looks at the Middle East, and they see uh, dysfunctional dictatorships, they see failed states. Here, we're showing the world that the Middle East can produce good news. Well, hopefully. That, that, that's a very positive thing, and I believe there'll be more of it. We've turned a page. This is a new epoch. Prime Minister Netanyahu is working very hard to further cement our relationships across the Arab and Muslim world, and I do expect to see more of it. All right, and as we said, first a peace agreement between Arab nations and Israel, too, in uh, over 25 years. Mark Regev, senior advisor to Prime Minister Netanyahu, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Thanks for having me, Caleb.